The halo effect is probably not something that we're all familiar with, but it's definitely something that we'll have all experienced at some point in our lives. On this week's episode of Get Psych, we're going to be looking at a definition of the halo effect, how it comes about, why it comes about, and what we can do about it. Guys, welcome to another episode of Get Psyched, and like I said, this week we're going to be looking at the halo effect. Now, the halo effect is a classic study in social psychology, and when we recognise it, we can see just how much it impacts the world around us. So what is the halo effect? Well, fundamentally, it's when a global perception of a person, be that negative or positive, is applied to every single characteristic of that person. We see this a lot in singers and actors, for example. Fundamentally, what the halo effect means is that if we really like somebody, if somebody is likeable and approachable, then we apply those characteristics to every single facet of that person. The same goes for negative people. So if we don't like somebody, if we think that they're unapproachable, we can automatically think that that's the same for every part of that person. Now, like I said, we see this in singers and actors and athletes, for example. We see someone on the TV screen or hear their music and we think they're a great person, they're really nice, they seem lovely we apply that principle to every single characteristic. Now that's obviously not true. Everybody has both good and bad parts of them. But the halo effect makes us believe that when we view somebody as positive, that every single part of them is great. We can also see this in a little bit of a different light with politicians. Now they focus a lot on the halo effect. If they come across well in interviews or on panels, then their popularity rating shoots up. Even though there's not great parts of them and personality wise, and policy-wise, they focus on trying to let the halo effect make decisions for their electorates. Now, personally, you might think that this is an easy problem to avoid and probably not that impactful, but there has been quite a bit of psychological research behind it to show that this actually isn't the case. Nesbitt and Wilson in 1977 conducted a really classic study with university students and lecturers. What the researchers did was they gathered university students into two groups and told both the groups that they were giving an evaluation on the lecture via video based on the amount of exposure that they had to that lecture. However, this wasn't true. What they were actually trying to ascertain was just how the halo effect influenced the student's opinion of these lectures. So what actually happened in the study was that there was two groups of students, both watched the same lecture on a video clip. This lecture had a Belgian accent, but with one of the groups, he was very cold and distant, and with the other, he was very warm and approachable. Students who saw the lecture being warm and approachable gave positive feedback for every single part of this lecturer's characteristics, including his Belgian accent and his mannerisms, even though the mannerisms were the same in both groups. Now, the students in the follow-up interviews couldn't understand why one lecturer was given a higher score than the other, even though they were informed about the halo effect. Again, even in individual interviews after the study, the students still didn't believe that the halo effect, i.e. the likability of the person, influenced the decision in giving the person a higher score or a lower score. Fundamentally, what this study did was it showed us that the halo effect is real and that we can have positive or negative overall opinions about a person based on just how much we think they're attractive or how warm and open we think they are. This study really highlighted this by showing those two groups of students viewing the same lecture just with different characteristics and how that can actually impact the score and overall opinion of that lecture. So exactly how does the halo effect affect us in our daily lives? Well, it's clear that it's very powerful and that with small changes in likability or positive characteristics, we can have an overall change in our perception of something massive. So for example, in business, the halo effect is used to great effect a lot of the time. With books, if a book says Harvard Classic at the top, sometimes those books can be sold up to three times as much as if it didn't have Harvard Classic written on the top of the book. The same goes with fashion, with studies that have been conducted with shirts and pairs of jeans, for example. When a brand name or a designer name is written on the item of clothing, they can sell for massive amounts more if the item doesn't have that brand name on it. What's fundamentally happening here is that the principles of the halo effect are being influenced into our daily lives and our spending habits, for example. We have a really positive view on something that we think is better. So like when a book says Harvard Classic or where a pair of jeans have a designer name on them, we automatically think that they're better. So maybe a small point to think about here is how you can use the halo effect to your own advantage. A few small changes can go a long way. For example, if you've got an interview and you dress well, if you're open and friendly and warm, these small changes can have massive influences on how you're perceived. 
So the next time you have an interview or a business meeting, for example, you might think about how these small changes can have an overall impact on who you're presenting to and who you're talking with. The truth about the halo effect is that we know it's there, we know it's extremely powerful, but it's still always really hard to identify, which could work in your favour if you use it to your advantage. Guys, thanks so much for watching another episode of Get Psyched. This week we've been looking at the halo effect, we've been looking at a definition of the halo effect, and how it comes about, and how maybe even you could use it to your advantage. Thanks so much for watching, and hopefully catch you next week.